Right, so I have a hard stop at 10.30 today because I have another meeting that got put on my calendar. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully we'll be okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Meeting minutes. Right, so Siko, I saw you saw you had. Um, <clears throat> oh, I couldn't see this image. That's right. Um, this not, oh, yes, we do need to remove that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's. Yeah, I keep seeing that one and I keep forgetting about it. I see it and then I forget about it before I remove it. Um, Jeez, it's being slow today. Has everybody finished their uh, final exams that had them? Uh, yeah, I got done with mine just a couple of days back. Nice. Did it go well? Do you know yet? Uh, yeah, mostly okay. All right. Pretty good, good. actually. Good. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. So, so this was yeah TensorFlow. All right. All right. So I need to remove uh, Python 3.8 exclusion from. Sort of flow MNIST test. Okay, so um, we need a bit. Have you made an issue for that? Um, or well, you probably haven't. Um, could you make an issue for that? Because, yeah, we do need to do that. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, and this is, uh, this one is, I thought, yeah, okay. So, um, all right, okay, so you're going to create an issue for that, great. <clears throat> so, yeah, Siko, well, we're on um, stuff that you were talking about here. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about, or what do you want to talk about today? Yeah, I read um, the concept of uh, recommendation of DFML. I have some typo that I get a request to fix. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I think I saw that pull request. Okay, great. Uh, anything else? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, great. Um, let's see. So we'll do that. Um, so, um, all right. Uh, Shah, do you have, what do you have, uh, that you would like to go over today? Uh, I made a pull request last oh, week. So. Uh, I don't know if you had done to look at it. I so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, this one. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay. Um, so anomaly detection. Well, I can't spell today. I can't spell ever. Okay. Anomaly detection. Great. Anything else? Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to start working on uh, the documentation for this today. Okay. And let's see how that goes. Okay. Okay. Great. Going to start working. Now. Okay. Uh, all 
Oh, yeah, I think. OK, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because we covered we covered um, console test stuff last week, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Great. Um, okay, anomaly detection PR, and then Nitesh, uh, what did you have that you wanted to talk about today? Yeah, I have made a two PR uh, regarding the console test of uh, classifier and Exiboost classifier and regressor as well. So awesome. So let's see, Exiboost. And yep. test PR. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so PR for Let's see have console test for the regressor and then we're adding the classifier. Great. All right. Sweet. Oh, great, great stuff, guys. All right. <clears throat> All right. Oops. <clears throat> All right, so PR for Xtrupus classifier. <clears throat> okay, great. And uh, one more thing I also want to talk about mm -hmm. uh, the, the the issue that in auto SK learn the CI will taking a one hour to run. Mm, uh, yeah, I was just going to ask yes. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So to solve this, uh, we need to set a parameter, but a, a, a parameter of particular value in a make numpy config function. So I didn't find mm. the way to set a default value in a make numpy config so ah okay ah wow yeah. good good job digging on that that's that sounds like that was a tricky one okay <laughs> yeah but the issue is resolved but uh, we need to set a uh, default value in a make numpy config nice okay function. so console test um so auto scale learn console test uh, uh one hour Test what this do to begin to set a default and make numpy. Yeah, and I also commented this on uh, uh, on the PR or on your PR. Okay, so, great. Yeah, with more stuff, I didn't remember the links, so that may be present on the GitHub. Okay. Let's yeah, second, second, second last, I think. All right, great. Yeah. I, was, I was like, I hope it shows up here because it usually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, we'll put this. Yep. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, I've been gone for the past few days. So I am back now, though. Um, cool. All right. <clears throat> great. That's, <laughs> I'm sure that was tricky. Nice job. Let's yep. see. All right. All right. Okay. We're going <clears> to <throat> let me just make sure I'm actually recording. Yes, we are. And we will jump right into the um, typo fix. Okay. And Siko, did you get any success with the neural networks? I know you were trying to use the neural network. Um, Tutorial. Yeah, I did um successful run the tutorial and I'm planning on using um by on the tutorial and will adapt for my post site. All right. Um, let's see. Is, is, uh, I'm just okay. sorry. I'm just uh, reading. Sorry, sorry. Continue. I only think uh, the Z on the top here and have the HTTP interface. 
that I think that interface is released, so early moves are coming soon here. Mm-hmm. The rest I don't know, it didn't exist for only 80 character per night. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so applications using DFML via its Python interface, Python library interface, command line interface, or HTTP interface can benefit from them being wrapped in a similar design pattern. This means that switching from a model implementing with one major framework to another is pretty much okay. Um, by wrapping very similar, so this line is definitely that's a good one. Um, Oh, yep, and we definitely have the HTTP interface now. Um, can benefit from them being... Okay. Yeah. Mm, now I'm realizing this whole thing is a little bit awkward. Um, okay. Um, uh, by wrapping various implementations, can benefit from them being wrapped in a similar design. Switching from one of my... To another is painless. Um... Ah, I think this should have been implemented. I think that's what's going on here. Uh, Alright, right, cool. I think, yeah, it just implemented. Let's just throw it in there. All right, cool. Great. Good good catch. I haven't looked at that. I know that concepts documentation may be a bit outdated at this point. Let's see. Um, let's squash and merge that. And this is in docs uh, concepts. Docs concepts. Okay, great. Sweet. Thanks. Um, sorry. Okay, so I just wanted to merged. Um, so I just wanted to double check. I didn't quite catch what you said on the um, on your usage of the neural network model, right? Because I know that that was one of the things that you wanted. To, you had another application that you were going to go through the tor- tutorial and then try to use it for something else. But did you say that you were, or you weren't able to to do that? Yes, uh, I haven't um, tried to use anything yet. Okay. All right. And then if you do, if you do run into issues on that, just, uh, you know, uh, yeah, post, post and get her. And then I think also, you know, uh, probably reach out to Saksham, um, cause I know Saksham, uh, you know, Saksham wrote that tutorial and I think he's got some stuff that he's been working on with that. So, uh, for issues, uh, reach. Is, is that sad? I... <laughs> There's some data pipeline I have already yet, so it's uh, quite hard to get started. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, anything else did you want to talk about today? All right, cool. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so let's look at this anomaly detection PR. Um, All right, good. Yeah, that's good feedback there, Natasha. Um, let's see. So, 
The other thing is, okay, so yeah, you did implement this stuff from scratch, which is good if you don't want to use. So if you implemented all of this from scratch, and you aren't importing, yeah, you're importing statistics, then we can probably leave this under the main package. So we probably don't need to create the model itself, um, like, as its own. We, we don't need to even put it in model scratch so long if you don't import um, anything, like, other than standard library. Oh, you do import NumPy. Okay, never mind. All right. Do you have more model scratch? Model, model uh -huh. Okay. I, I don't I think I need. I don't think I actually need uh, statistics because I I don't think I've used statistics anywhere. It's just that when I was starting out, I thought it would yeah. be a good thing to have. Okay. In yeah, uh, I think I forgot to remove that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's just see here. So yeah, you have NumPy, um, and I think okay. So one of the things that is going on here is it looks like you. Um, you did the DFFML model create, um, so, uh, here we did DFFML service dev model create, um, however, uh, we already have the scratch package, uh, which really needs to be named to NumPy. Um, uh, therefore, <clears throat> we should take the implementation and move it um, and implementation in. So we just want to take the file itself that you've implemented in all of the um, Basically, we don't need this directory right here in the middle, um, the DFML model anomaly detection, because it's all going to go under model scratch. Um, so this file <clears throat> will move. Oops, I don't have DFML over here, do I? Um, So this would be the right location for that file. So we should take the implementation and move it to right here um, and then everything basically will just go under model scratch so so um, so we don't yeah we didn't need to do the DFML model create in this case because we already have that um, there's already set a py file under model scratch um, does that make sense uh, yeah yeah oh. cool um, so yeah, so just a bit of restructuring is going to need to happen here. Um, but that should be fairly trivial. Um, and then these train files. So let's see. Okay. So these train files look like something. So we usually try to try to generate the data if possible. And it looks like something that you might be able to generate here. Um, so let's try to. Let's try to use Python to generate these files. Um, oh, okay, let's see. Oops. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, maybe we can come up with something. Let's see. Tests look good. Okay, maybe we can come up with something that is. Um, yeah, let's see if we can come up with some kind of Python function to generate these files. Um, because. 
there's a lot of stuff here and when we ask people to create those files they'll have to copy paste all that stuff in there and it's nice if we can just maybe have a little um you know a little little console like a, a, a command line command or a little python function that can be run to do this um because this is just sort of like a large wall of text that's going to end up in the documentation <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah and like, so can... the main issue here is uh, that the training it's it's basically a lot of data that's the issue right it mm. it'd be better if you, we had like lesser number of features with something yeah that's easy to visualize yeah why don't we yeah why don't we cut down the number of features maybe we could just use like two features or something um or even yeah why why don't we just use like two features because i think that would you know get the point across we just want to give people the you know the minimum amount of information that they need to then expand on that right so you, you could just you know okay. do a you you know you can do a rand choice um so let's 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 see how we might um let's see how we might do this um so <clears throat> yeah well actually you know we'll we'll just we'll leave this to you you'll, you'll be able to figure this out um but just try to try yeah, to yeah, cut this down absolutely. um yeah try to cut this down so I'll cut it down to a couple of features yeah so something that's easy to visualize yeah let's have these files or the test and train data generated um by some python function um uh, let's cut it down to two features and one and why. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All right, great. Um, and then let's see. Did that add comment? Okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> and then is this so also is this something that you came up with or are you getting this from like did you get you know let's see did you is this an algorithm that you you know sort of copied verbatim from somewhere and then put in you know in the format of the of, of the dffml class or is this something that, you, that you'd come up with uh, I'd say it's partly both. Like there are parts of it that I had learned um, from the online course, and there's parts of it I had to come up by myself. So okay, yeah. So let's make sure that if you got it from somewhere, because there's there's licensing issues that we can run into. Um, we need to we need to understand like you know what the appropriate license is, um, because um, you know we can get in trouble if if there's anything that's that somebody could come and say oh, that's directly copied from without stating the license um so if there's if you can figure out where where it came from exactly if there's parts that are you know going to be similar enough that somebody would recognize them if they came across this and said oh this is you know this is from my course um and you didn't state a reference to the course or the license um because you know then then people yeah obviously you need to give credit where credit is due right so Let's just make sure that uh, we know what the yeah, license even is if it's, and we can reference it. Yeah, even, uh, even if it's like an open license. Yeah, we just need to know what we need to know what the license is, right? Um, so if they if they explicitly okay. state that it's you know Creative Commons attribute by CC 4.0 or whatever that one is, that's a pretty common one. We just need to say you know here's. Yeah. We need to figure out whatever the license is and then reference the original docs and maybe the author. Like they all have sort of different recommendations, but mostly it's it's usually okay to just say, okay, what is the license and then how do you find the, the source? Um, yeah. We just, yeah, we don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. So basically, you want me to find out what type of licensing this entire algorithm has, right? Yeah, well, just make sure that if you, you know, if you copy code from anywhere or if this is, I mean, I would be very surprised if this is some kind of proprietary patented algorithm, um, but it's no, mostly it, about, no, it isn't. yeah, so it's mostly like, about, I like, if sure it isn't, yeah, proprietary, yeah. Uh, proprietary, and I didn't copy code from somewhere, but, uh, I pretty much wrote it all, all on my own, so okay, cool. I'll still check, I'll 
I'll still check, and if there is any issues, I'll get back to you. All right, cool. Yeah, and and if there's yeah some anything where yeah anything where it's but if if you think you know I got I got some of the you know I got concepts or you know code from anywhere, um, just make sure that you reference like this is a common thing actually that everybody should know about Stack Overflow. Is that when you get stuff from Stack Overflow, um, sometimes you copy paste it off there, but you really need to um, put like okay, let's see Stack Overflow. Um, what is this? All right, so you really, if you do end up getting something from Stack Overflow and you put it in a project, you need to do, you need to oh here, perfect. Okay, so you need to reference. Okay, and yeah. It would be better if it didn't include the user ID, but whatever. Um, you need to reference the link. So you need to say, I got this from, you know, the Stack Overflow link, and it is whatever the license is, which is usually Creative Commons. Um, uh, yeah, by SA 4.0. Um, and then as long as you do that, no one can be mad at you. <laughs> so it's just a good, good thing to know. It's basically like citations, right? It's licensing now. So, all right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Let's see. We find out uh, if there is any. Uh, um, um, Uh, does the same thing hold for a medium blog also? Like, uh, say there's a blog post that I use to uh, make the mathematical functions. So, yeah, hmm. does the same thing hold for that as well? Uh, let's see. I mean, the thing is, so unless something has an explicit license associated with it, it's... it. it it is determined that like it's 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 completely copyrighted without without anyone's intention to wanting to share it now so that's where it's like you you know copying so if you're copying code from a blog verbatim that it's you know not and no one states a license on there then you know you can't you can't copy the code verbatim um i'm not i mean i okay that's my understanding of it um but that's not I mean, it may be good to go double check that. Um, this, like, so for example, what I've done here is that I basically just say all the code on this blog is public domain, um, and that essentially means that it's 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 like you don't have to worry about what the license. There is no license, basically. If it, someone says it's public domain, you don't have to worry about it. Now, everybody's gonna be different, and you know, especially if you're looking at something like. Yeah, blog is a, a less, you know, obviously a more nuanced place than like GitHub where something has an explicit license. Um, so I would just say try to do some, I don't know, try to do some research on that um, because this is, I'm not sure, and this is something that's going to be helpful in the long run anyway, so it would be good to know. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. All right. Okay, and K was the split, right? Yeah. Okay. Where is the config? There it is. Okay. So, was there a reason why it's called K, or could we call it split? Because obviously, if it's the split, then it, it probably makes more sense to call it split, unless there's a good reason to call it K. Uh, split split was the name of the function, I think. Mm. So that's why I decided to call it K. Okay. Um, let's see.
So let's see, xval, pval. So, why? So we take we're using x here, but we're never using y. Why? Why was that? Because it looks like you know, obviously, the reason if you use we had talked about this earlier, right? But if you have the split, so you're using x x val, you do p multivariate Gaussian to calculate p on x but it seems like okay you the outliers are the y val epsilon okay and these are the outliers in yeah in the training set okay let's do f1 so you're storing the anomalies that existed within the detection set yeah within the training set. So why are you storing those? Uh, I'm storing those to calculate uh, the F1 score, right, or the accuracy. That's where I use Y as well. Okay. Well, it looks like we're not actually using it anywhere because it looks like you recall it here, but then you recalculate it first, right? So, and then you, yeah, then you recalculate it here and then you store it again and you crawl it here again, but then you don't use it here. So I think we can get rid of that, right? Uh, no, we aren't re... I don't think we're recalculating it. Wait, let me just open it on my yeah. laptop. Yeah, because it looks like we come in here, we say find in its indices, and we pass the outliers in the training set. And then we store the list of 01. And then we come in to accuracy, we retrieve the list of 01. And then we... Yeah, yeah. In... in uh... I guess you could do away with that. Yeah, yeah. I guess we could do away with that because, uh, yeah. Right, cool. Because what happens is we use the validation set sort of to calculate the accuracy or yeah. the F1 score. Okay, so let's see. The only place I think we do use that. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. We use that in the predict uh, function because we need to predict which of the um, for each record, we need to pre predict if it's an outlier or not, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, we don't use it here, though, right? Because it doesn't look... No, like not an accuracy. Well, this is in predict. Yeah, we... I, I, this... Yeah... Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, we could do away with that. All right. Absolutely. All right, let's yeah, let's remove that then. Um, all right, so yeah, let's get rid of that, and then and then we can get rid of this call too. Um, oops. Yeah, and then obviously, okay, so let's clean up and get rid of comments and stuff, um, or get rid of these comments, right? Um, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, you've got more to do, so I'm sure you will. Um, and then the other thing is that uh, we pretty much have, let's see, we pretty much have comments. I don't know, uh, that's actually, I wish a black could check for that, but I don't think it can. But just for sake of consistency, uh, we usually have comments like this with a capital letter. So it's just a style thing. Um, okay. 
Um, let's see, accuracy is F1. Okay. And then you report out F1, report out the prediction. And this is a, yeah, this is a classification model, essentially. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Predictions. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, so let's clean this up. Let's run style. Let's try to find some. Um, <clears throat> let's try to find a way to generate this, and then let's move it out of this package and into the model scratch package. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to do the examples. Yeah. So, looking good. Nice. All right. Let's see. Uh, generate test data. Okay. And then what's the last thing now? Okay. All right. So we now, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, uh, just one thing. Uh, is it necessary to use Python functions to generate the random data or? Well, so here's what I'm thinking is that, I mean, you can use a command line thing as well, but it would be good to use Python functions because especially when we start looking at stuff like, oops, Sutantra, I see. Um, it would be good to use a Python function um, because um, because then it, it's easier to, to, to use across platforms. So if somebody's doing it on Windows, then they can you know just throw the because my thinking here is that what we'll do is is have it be you know if you can write a Python function for it, then you can do Python dash C and then you know import random uh, for I in range you know zero. 1,000 or 100, yeah, uh, you know, print random dot choice, um, you know, zero, one, and then you write, basically just dump out the, um, dump out, like dump, print a bunch of random, you know, random, uh, um, yeah, just generate random, random, um, uh, labels and features, right? You're going to have to make sure that the features are obviously, you, you have to make sure it makes sense that the model will be able to figure it out, right? Um, but if, oh. you can probably come up with something that can go, you know, that can fit within this one liner, right? So from Python, you can use it there, or when you do the console test example, you, you'll show it like this, right? Uh, yeah, I might need to go through this again, but uh, I'll try and do. All right, cool. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's what I was saying in Python is just because then you can you can you can leverage it both places and and it'll work on, yeah. on Windows too. Because um, some we've had times where we've generated examples with I think like awk and stuff and it's great. It just there may not be awk on Windows and we haven't sort of started testing all those on Windows yet. People are going to run into that. So all right. Um, all right, Nitesh. All right, so let's go over these pull requests here. So. Yeah, I think these things we have discussed in our previous meeting. So okay, cool. I just, yeah, I just squash right. the commits, multiple commits. All right, cool. Nice. Yeah. in the change log, so cool, great. All right, um, let me just double check.
All right, great. Looks good. Sweet. Okay. Very nice. Actually, what did you do? Let's see. Okay, yeah, so also, uh, one of the other things is that if you put in the commit body, if you say, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash it like this because we need to put this, but if you put in the body of the commit fixes and then the issue number, then, then yeah, then we can just, then I can just hit rebase. Um, okay. Sweet. Very nice. Oh. Um, Why do you remove the pull request uh, uh, has that? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, no, we do need the we do need the the little hash um, in front of the issue number in order for it to close it. Is that what you were saying? So what about the pull request when you squat and it re remove the pull request number? Yeah, it, yeah. I always remove the pull request number just because that's how it's always. I know some people, some some projects keep the pull request number in the commits, but since we haven't been doing that for a long time, um, I try to remove them because or else we'd have some pull requests with pull request numbers and some pull requests without, um, or some commits would say pull request numbers and some wouldn't. Um, I guess we could we could start keeping them, um, but doesn't it? Does it tell us where it came from? I guess it doesn't tell us where it came from. Oh, no, it does. Yeah, here it will tell you which pull request it came from anyways. All right. Yeah, that's good to know. All right. So, yeah. So, if you do go to the commit, it will tell you what pull request it came from. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's check this guy. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Um, okay. I just realized we add the iris as a classification example using the regressor model, which, like, it works, but it, it works fine, but it, uh, it would be it'd probably be better to have a real regression example. Doesn't really matter though. People can provide their own data. All right. Okay. Yeah, this looks good. Uh, classify. Okay. I don't think we need this here. Try to keep everything sort of free of print statements. If you do need to use something, you can use a log or like a logger dot self dot logger dot info. Um, but print statements are generally we don't need those um and the main thing is you know this is sort of one of those like uh, it's kind of like one of those you know the the unix tool philosophy is is no news is good news right so <laughs> we're we're assuming yeah. that if it doesn't say anything that it's successful right yes okay um uh, let's see this is great cool all right yeah this looks good cool oh, okay yeah we got to get rid of this um so I'll just, I'll just throw this guy in here um let's see and did we have an issue for this um yes we did okay there we go uh oh conflicting files Yeah. 
No, it's because we merged one and then the other, but hmm, that's weird. Oh, it's mad that you moved the file and then the other pull request changed it, so it's confused. Um, maybe just, yeah, try to merge, rebase on master or merge master or whatever, and then um, if you want to have practice with the fixes thing, I would just do. So, let's see. So, the squashed, so the squashed commit message for this PR would be Um, yeah, and then let's just so please merge master into this, then squash or rebase. All right, cool. Okay. Okay, let me put this in the notes. So, uh, so this merged, and then it remove the print on will merge. All right, nice. And okay, so. Okay, so so the issue, so we still have an issue here on the auto SK learn console test, the test taking an hour. And the solution is essentially going to be that we need to implement a way to override a default value via make a dump and fig. Yeah, there's a parameter called as uh, time left for the task. So the default value is 36. Uh, 100 seconds so that's why it's taking one hour oh so is that just saying like okay run for 3600 seconds and and try to find the model for 3600 seconds is that what's going on here or... like, yeah that's okay. the ah i see that's that's funny that's funny that it's funny that it's um let's see Oh, it's probably because the, is it because the non-command line examples have, um, is it, let's see, let's see. Yeah, okay, it's because we've been setting it explicitly and then we weren't setting it when we were doing... Okay. Um, let's see. Aha, uh -huh. okay, that makes sense. All right, so if we just set it, though, then we should be okay. Um, so, um, let's see. Just okay. Okay. So, well, rather than setting it, overriding it, because we should probably leave the 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 default value there, but we should probably just have the example set it explicitly. So, that was a good. Okay. So check it out. Okay. Nurse the other SQL stuff. Uh, let's see. All right. Okay.
assets on this. And we need to set it. Okay, our time left for this ask. Oh, is the it was when we run this. That's right. This guy's not setting it. Ah, oh, okay. It was the Python example. That's right. All right. Um, all right, sweet. So time left for this task equals 120, and hopefully this fixes that. All right, great. Good find. All right. Um, and then I'll reference the command. go. Oh, I didn't add it. Right. Um, that makes sense. There we go. All right. Um, I think, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about today, Natish? Yeah, actually, I wanted to work on a sweet whiz that uh, oh, we yeah. were talking up last to last week. So, uh, in that meet, in that meeting, you have uh, give me a starting way to how to create a service and all these things. But in a doc, I didn't find any kind of tutorial to uh, how to start a service. So I, oh. I just want to Are you, know the initial. To... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I see. Um, that's that's a very good point. Um, so let's see. Uh, it's, uh... So, and in the recordings, I think that pass that part was a missed. So I yeah, I don't think we covered recording. that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, the HTTP API is the only service that we have right now, so it's it's this it's just like this. So HTML service and then whatever. So if you have DFML service sweep is then or then it would be you know DFML service sweep is. Um, and it's just going to invoke whatever that command line, um, that the command that you registered is, because um, I think we talked about. So let's see. Uh, for starting or for running a service. Um, or we can add a sweet as a service or in, in other different way. Is so yeah we talked about this a little bit but um so we can we can add it basically we could add it as its, as its own plugin type as a visualization plugin type and this is something that was explored uh by somebody um i think last last year they thought about you know adding visualizations um and so i can try to find their um proposal they had a project proposal that they did around ad adding visualizations um and it would end up being that you would add a plugin type and, and you can see sort of some of the stuff that they were thinking about. Um, but the thing is, we the, we don't, we should probably sort of stage this by adding them as these services because, um, I mean, you could, you could add it as a plugin type. The thing is that implies that there's gonna be a bunch more visualizations. Um, and I guess, well, there are a lot of different ways to visualize. I'm not. It's. I'm not so sure if there's a standard and enough. You know, we'd want a standard way to display them all. Essentially, if there was a plugin type, right? And I know this one displays via HTML. You probably get a lot of them to display via HTML. But if you were going to make it a plugin type, you would need to add some infrastructure around that. Um, kind of like how models are trained, predict, and accuracy, right? Um, that sort of standardizes the way that you use the model. The, the visualizations you'd have to come, you'd probably want to look at several different visualization frame, like 
visualization tools and then standardize on the way that you output right um and it, yeah. and so if you, you you know you may have time to do that now you may not right and so the thought process here is if you add one as the if you add one here as a service and then you maybe if you happen to add another one as a service, then now you'd have two examples. But I don't know if you're, you know, doing this because, right? You, you, you're probably doing this because you, it was, it would be cool to have, right? Um, and and yeah, it would be very helpful to have. But the thing is, we need to sort of, we need to kind of stage it, and so we can see, you know, as we add a few, like what are they gonna, what is the output gonna look like, and how do we find a standard way to deliver that output? Um, because um, yeah, we don't want to sort of make some assumptions off of having one or two libraries um, because it may not fit for everything, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's the thought process there. Yeah, makes sense. So I think uh, right now we have to go with the services. Yeah, okay, cool. so that's cool. Yeah, because the service is sort of like a staging area for generic stuff um, that's yeah. related to DFFML, right? But but maybe it does not have its own exact plugin type. Right, let's add it under say, yep. say, right, point. Um, okay. Uh, if so, if we, so, we could add more visualizations later. Um, um, uh, once we have more, we'll want we'll want to think about uh, maybe creating their own uh, plugin type uh, so that there is a standard inf interface into them all. Uh, we'll use service as a staging place uh, until we maybe create the plugin type. All right, cool. Anything else on that? Mm, no. All right, cool. Right. All right, Sutanshu, how's it going? Oh, uh, yeah, it's going great. Cool. How'd your exams go? Uh, I'm yet to give my exams. They oh, okay. are scheduled in January. Oh, okay, that's right. Well, good luck. Then. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I was actually looking uh, into the, the Transformers mm -hmm. tests which were failing. So I actually found out that uh, the reason they were failing was because of a dependency issue of NumPy. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have added a, a NumPy uh, version uh, that is less than 1.19. Okay. And that should fix the issue. Sweet. Okay, awesome. Great. Yeah. Uh, that the issue with transformers. Yeah, I looked at that and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. But, so nice. And I'm like also like removing the some of the unused imports. Okay. Because they were left in the previous commit. Oh, okay, great. So yeah. moved, uh, unused imports. Uh, okay, so you removed unused imports from where exactly? From the accuracy staging branch or from the transformers? Uh, everywhere, like where, oh, where everywhere. Like... All right, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh I haven't like pushed. You haven't pushed it yet. Yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that's going to be a giant yeah. change, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, it may be good. I, yeah, that's it's be good to do that, but also I think that's going to wreak havoc with the merging situation. Um, so we may want to hold off on doing that until we've actually merged all of this accuracy staging branch into the master branch. You know what I mean? Because that's going to create probably a lot of problems with the merge when you try to, you know, merge master and accuracy staging together. 
Uh, yes, it will cause some problems. Yeah, I may. I yeah, I think it might be best to drop that commit for now, and then we can do that later because that's definitely or just like put that commit in some other branch, you know, save it for later so that we can try to try to. Uh, yeah, I have created a phase five point five. Okay, great. <laughs> then, yeah. Awesome. All right, let's see. So. Oh, like do we need to like rebase it right now or i think it's yeah i think it's time to rebase um because i think if i remember correctly let's see um, so all right Okay, so yeah, I think we need to. We should, it would probably be good if we rebase again. Um, so yeah, yeah. So uh, how how do we do it? Like, okay. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So... Um, okay. So yeah, I started to do it the other day actually when I was like I ran out of time. Um, where's the damn? I can't do it with the stupid. I hate it when it has the scroll bar. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, All right, so, so this is the last commit on accuracy staging, which I think um, you know is not the one that you fixed the tens or the transformers, right? Because it's just on origin, um, on upstream. But all right, so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to say, you know, fetch master or fetch origin or sorry, fetch origin, and then rebase origin master and now it's going to just give you problems um so, <laughs> so then you you basically just go through and so let's see good status right, so. uh so uh actually i was thinking like we can do a merge so or rebase because i'm not uh rebase is probably going to cause a lot of issue yeah i think uh I guess, I don't know. Uh, see, the thing is, let's see. The thing is with the merge commit that it... It will add extra commits, right? Yeah, it adds an extra commit and it, it, it screws up the history a little bit, right? So it's hard to follow. Yeah. And, and that's, it's kind of, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty important to understand, you know, what, how, how everything happened. Um, so... I don't, I don't know if it's going to be too much of, let's see, because I think most of the stuff that you've been touching has not been, you know, I think, I think it's been, um, I think it's been far enough away from everybody else's changes. Like, I don't think you've been hitting a lot of modif. there haven't been a lot of modifications to the models. There's been additions of new models, but I think you've you merged in most of those um i don't think that it will cause too many problems here um i can try to take a whack at it um let's see uh, okay yeah um what is it on about here What is this? This doesn't make any sense. Why would be showing this? I wonder what happened here. Um, oh, I think this is happening because. Hmm, okay, yeah, this is a disaster. Um, let's see. 
I think this is because we have so many of those cherry picked commits. Um, hmm. All right. Okay. Well, we might. I don't. So I think I'm going to have a lot more. Um, I have. I have some good news that I will be sharing at a later date. Um, but I think I'm going to have some more time to, uh, to to try to mess with stuff like this. So why don't you move on to phase um, the HTTP um, server stuff because that should that should be. I don't think this will take too much longer. And then I'll I'll try to I'll try to do the merge on this. Um, uh, I I can also like try to merge it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's see what happens if we merge. No, not merge rebase. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just want to. I know. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. Yeah. This is what happens if we merge. All right. Um. Oh God. Um. Yeah. Okay. And I think some of these are definitely due to these cherry picks. Or what is going on here? Yeah, I have a strong feeling that these are due to the cherry picks. Um. Yeah, it seems like this might be cherry pick related for a lot of these funky little things. Um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, why don't we hold off on dealing with this for now? Because um, I just, I unfortunately don't have bandwidth to um, uh, provide good feedback on uh, uh, yeah, how it, this is going to work. So. It's time consuming stuff. Yeah, it's going to be time consuming. It's going to be, I want to make sure that, you know, obviously this changes changes everything, right? So we got to, I, I want to make sure that we both are looking at this with with as much as attention as it deserves. Um, so let's let's hold off. I'm going to have time in January. Um, so if, if we can hold off on that, let's just do the rest of this and then figure out what the hell happened there. Because my guess is it's related to a lot of the cherry picks. So I think what yes. we'll end up doing is we'll go through and we'll drop everything that we cherry picked and then... Uh, and then we'll do the rebase, and hopefully it'll apply much more cleanly. Um, because I think it's getting confused at how you know how that happened. Um, yep. All right. Cool. So I'll probably start with phase six then. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Very exciting. And I let's see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, sweet. Very exciting. Very exciting. This is going to be very cool. All right. Anything else from you, Sudhanshu? Oh, uh, no, that's it. All thank right. You. Hey, thank you. This is very, um, good. And wow, look at this. Like, this has been a long one. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, is does anybody have anything? Any final final thoughts? Anything they want to talk about? All right. So I am actually. So I am on vacation. Um, I'm going to be on vacation through next Tuesday. So I'm probably going to be I'm going to be checking stuff. But I also have a you know some things that I'm doing. Um, so I will I will try to get back to everybody. Um, but if I'm slow, just know that that's what's going on. So, all right. I'll see you all on next Tuesday and I'll see you on Gitter. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.